the city of Lizichansk, the streets are quiet and residents are emerging to occupation by Russian forces. There is damage, but nothing compared to what might have been had Ukrainian forces not withdrawn. President Vladimir Putin says he wants his forces to push on. Next in line could be Bakhmut in the Donetsk region, the target of more random shelling of civilian areas. And to the north in Kharkiv, this is the aftermath of a Russian strike near a school. These are tough times for Ukraine's military, but the president promises the tide will turn. We need to break them. This is a difficult task. It requires time and superhuman efforts. But we have no alternative. This is about our independence, about our future, about the fate of the entire Ukrainian nation. Further south, near the strategically vital city of Kherson, recently donated U.S. rocket launchers are finally being deployed. Ukraine hopes the long-range HIMARS system will finally help the fight back. In Brussels, Finnish and Swedish foreign ministers were welcomed by NATO ambassadors as they signed official accession protocols. They must now be ratified by each of the 30 existing members. President Putin tried to close NATO's door. We uh, now demonstrate that NATO's door remains open. In Lugano, a two-day conference on reconstruction has ended. Ukraine's prime minister outlined the scale of the task, but said he hoped some funding will come from Russian assets. So it cost more than 700 billion. So we understand that it's huge, huge money. But we understand that some of them will be compensated from confiscated Russian assets. The level of destruction will require years of rebuilding and can only start when the guns fall silent. And there's no sign of that. Julie Eger, TRT World.